بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the beautiful Quran قل إن كان آباؤكم وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره إن الله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the beautiful Qur'an, Say, O Muhammad, if your fathers, your sons and your brothers, your wives and your relatives, the wealth which you have obtained, the commerce in which you fear decline, and the dwellings which you, have, which, which you are pleased with, are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger, and struggling in His cause, then wait until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings about His command. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide the unworthy people. My brothers and sisters, there are three things which if a person feels, there are three things which, which if a person has, then he will indeed taste the sweetness of Iman. The first and most important of which is what? Is what my brothers and sisters? It is but loving Allah and the Messenger. It is but loving Allah and the Messenger. It is that you should love Allah and the Messenger more than anything else. Imam al-Bayhaqi, may Allah have mercy upon him. Reports in his Sunan that once a companion came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh Rasulullah, you are more beloved to me than everything else. O oh Rasulullah, you are more beloved to me than my family and my wealth. O oh Rasulullah, when I'm with my family, then I remember you, O oh Rasulullah. Then, my, then I feel my heart at re- unrest. I feel this unrest and this tension in me. And I must come out and run to you, O Rasulullah, until my eyes see you. And then I feel my heart's finding at rest. At that point, the companion started to cry. He started to cry and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and said, Oh, so and so, what makes you cry? He said, Oh, so and so, what makes you cry? So the companion, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, Then, O Rasulullah, I remember death. I remember death. And that I will miss you, O Rasulullah. And then when I pass away, and you will pass away, and I will go to my grave, and then you will go to my grave. How shall I, how shall I look at you and be with you, O Rasulullah? And thereafter you will be raised up, and I will be raised up. And inshallah you will be with the companions of the prophets. You will be with the prophets in the day of judgment. And you will be in the highest order of paradise. Whereas, O Rasulullah, what will happen to me? If I indeed do make it to paradise, then how will I ever be in your, in your, in your companionship? 
Oh Rasulullah, now that I'm your companion, how will I ever be your companion in paradise? At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the beautiful verse in the Quran. مَن يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the beautiful verse. And when this verse was revealed, then the companions became so happy that they've never been so happy in their lives. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Indeed, he who obeys Allah and the Messenger, indeed, he who obeys Allah and the Messenger, then he will be with the prophets and the siddiqeen and the martyrs and the good doers in the Day of Judgment. وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And what a righteous company that is. So I ask my brothers and sisters who are listening to me today, Oh, you who say that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is your guide and your prophet, do you not wish to be next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do you not wish that you could come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and grab his hand and shake it and give him a hug and say, Oh Rasulullah, how much I missed you. Oh Rasulullah, how much I loved you, how much I read about you. Oh Rasulullah, how much I wanted to, wanted to be with you. Do you not wish this? Indeed, every single Muslim wishes this. <clears throat> the ulama of Islam, may Allah have mercy upon them. They mention the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the greatest act of ibadah. They mention that loving Allah and the messenger of Allah is the most and highest deed that you can do. And they mentioned that indeed love of Allah and the Messenger of Allah is the basis and foundation for all deeds. Such is mentioned by Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him in his fatawa. And Ibn Qudama, may Allah have mercy upon him, reports in Al-Mughni that the ulama have complete consensus that it is obligatory upon every single Muslim. It is obligatory upon the heart of every single Muslim to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the people's love can be of four different types. People can have four different types of love. The first type of love which everyone would have known is that everyone and every man can love material things. Like for example, everyone loves a good thobe. Everyone likes nice perfume. Everyone likes their nice car. Everyone likes to have good in this life. This is love for the material things. The second type of love which people can have is love that necessitates physical desire, such as the love between the husband and the wife. The third type of love that people can have is a type of love that necessitates obedience, but it does not necessitate praise, such as, for example, love for the parents, such as what? Love for the, love for the parents. And this is the love which necessitates obedience to the parents, because you must obey your parents. However, it does not necessitate that you should praise your parents or extol your parents above others. And the fourth and the last type of love is a love that is due to Allah and His Messenger. Is a love that is due to Allah and the Messenger. No, it is not a material type of love. No, it is not a physical type of love. No, it is not a type of love that only necessitates obedience. Rather, it is a type of love that, that necessitates obedience and praise and exaltation. That you should love Rasulullah wasallam. That you should praise Him. That you should extol Him. That you should make him higher than anything else. This love which is due to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cannot be put into words. I can't say love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is X, Y, Z. Can be defined as X, Y, Z. No, this is not possible. For indeed love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is only known by the actions of the heart. Is only known by the actions of the heart and the actions of the limbs. So why must we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why is it obligatory for a Muslim to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Rather the question should be, how can we not love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How can we not love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in an authentic hadith in Bukhari Muslim, muttafaqun alayh, agreed upon, that he said, then none of you will enter paradise. None of you will enter paradise until I become more beloved to him than his father and his child and, and all of mankind. Then his tribe, when he said his father, he meant his tribe. When he said his son, he meant all his wealth and belongings and possessions and all of mankind. Anything else 
that he may have not mentioned in these two things. Anything else, O oh people, anything else, you will not truly enter paradise. You will not truly be a believer until you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then all of, these thi- all of these things. Why should we not, why should we not love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When we see his great character, when we see his great character, do you not remember how the, the Arab came to the mosque? How the Arab from the desert came to the mosque? And he needed to use the toilet however the people were praying. So he came and he joined the, uh, joined the prayer. And then he finished the prayer with the people. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, Salaamu well, alaykum wa rahmatullah, then he got up immediately and he went to the farthest corner of the mosque. And he opened his pants and he started to urinate. And he urinated in the part of the mosque. Did you not see, O oh people, how the companions wished to hit him? How the companions wished to rebu- re- rebuke him? But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, Da'hu. Da'hu. Leave him, let him complete it. Leave him and let him complete it. And thereafter, after the companions let him and he completed his, 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 what he had to do. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Call him to me in the best of manners. Call him to me. So the companions called him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of characters. Yes, wallahi, the best of characters. He told him, Ya hadha, oh so and so. Ya hadha, oh so and so. These are the places of worship. These are the mosques of Allah, the places of worship. It does not befit us to use these places of worship as places of urination. Then indeed, the companion, this this, this Arab, he was so amazed at this character of Rasulullah What is this character that makes a man uh, have so much patience over something which none of us would have ever had patience upon? Once I remember praying Taraweeh in, this, in the Prophet's mosque. I remember praying Taraweeh in the Prophet's mosque and I was in the road, I was praying there. And then there was a small child, a small child, and he had actually, he couldn't hold his, urine, his, his, uh, his bladder anymore. So he just let it go. And we were where? In the Rawda. So he just let it go. A poor child, he couldn't wait for his father to complete 20 rakah. He couldn't wait for it. So he just let it go. And subhanallah, it was as if there was a whole new world war starting. You see, you see, the, poor, the, you see the people, the pious people, all screaming and shouting, Ah, what is this? What is this? A'udhu billah, a'udhu billah. Whose son is this? Whose child is this? Where was the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Where was the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, Noon, wal qalami wa ma yasturoon, ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon, wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a beautiful verse in surah, in surah Al-Qalam. He says what? Noon. He says noon. وَالْقَلَمِ وَمَا يَسْتُرُونَ And he swears by the pen with which the angels write down our deeds. He swears by the pen with which the angels write down our deeds. وَمَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ And O oh, you Muhammad, by Allah's grace, you are not mad. You are not mad over O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ And for you is a reward that is everlasting paradise. For you is an everlasting paradise. And then he says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed you are upon an, an exalted character. You are upon an exalted character. And this is an example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's character. So how shall we not love him? How shall, how shall we not love him? Also from the, from the reasons why we should love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he always chose that which was easy upon us. He always chose that, that which was easy upon us. Do you not remember when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the companions, O oh people, Allah has written hajj upon you. Allah has made hajj obligatory upon you. فَحُجُّ so, so do hajj. So perform your hajj. And so a man came out and said, أَفَكُلِّ آمِنْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Is it in every year, O Prophet of Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ turned away and he kept on walking. And he came and said, Is it in every year, O Prophet of Allah? So he kept on walking. And he, and he repeated his question. So the Prophet ﷺ had said, Were I to say yes? Were I to say yes, then it would become obligatory upon you and would not be able to. 
you would not be able to. Look at the rahmah for this ummah. Look at the mercy for this ummah. So why should we not love him? Also look at the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Badr. Look at the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Badr. 317 people came out of Medina in order to fight the kuffar, in order to get back the, the wealth which the, which the kuffar of Medina, of Makkah had taken from them. And when the caravan of Abu Sufyan deluded them and went back to, Medina, went back to Makkah, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written for them, for them a war against Quraysh. So when the caravan reached Medina, when reached Makkah, and the people and the, and the messenger of Abu Sufyan reached Makkah, then the people of Makkah came out in all their glory, in all their the valor. They came out, 1,000 of them, to fight Allah and His Messenger, to wage war against Allah and the Messenger. So they came and came in all their, in all their splendor. They came to, to, to fight the Muslims. And then the Muslims waited for them in the battle of Badr, in the, in, the, in the plains of Badr. They waited for them in the plains of Badr, and the Muslims were all very tired. This small, sorry group of Muslims were all very tired, so they slept the night, except only one of them, except one of them, and that was Rasulullah So he stayed up all night, imploring his Lord, raising his hands up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and saying, Oh Allah, if this small group of Muslims are to be destroyed, Oh Allah, there will be no one left on this earth to worship you. Oh Allah, we implore you, Oh Allah. Oh Allah, we implore you. All throughout the night, imagine this lone man standing up all throughout the night in this forgotten valley of Badr. He stood up all the night imploring his Lord, whereas all the Muslims were fast asleep. Fast asleep they were, whereas this person was making dua. Now I ask you, if Rasulullah had not been sent to this ummah, where would one of us be? Where would we be? Answer me this question, would you be in Medina coming for a holiday? Why would you ever come to this place, this forgotten city? Why would you ever come to this? Why would you ever come to this city? If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do what he did for us after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how would you be spending your time now? Where would you be? Would you be coming to Hajj? No, you would never be coming to Hajj. What type of animal would you be worshipping? What idol would you be worshipping? Subhanallah, look at the great mercy of Allah. So why should we not love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do you not remember? Have you not read the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the day of judgment? About the day of judgment, when, when the people will all gather, the people will all gather and they will go to all the prophets. They will first go to Adam and then they will go to all the other prophets thereafter. And, and, and all the prophets will say, no, no, go away from me, go away from me. I have done this and I have done that. Meaning that they are worried about themselves. They will be worried for themselves except for Rasulullah wasallam on the day of judgment. So you will go to him. You will go to Rasulullah wasallam on, on the day of judgment. And when you say, Oh Rasulullah, please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. Please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. Will Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, No, no, nafsi, nafsi, oh myself, oh myself. I wish to save myself, myself. Will he say, Oh my family, my family. Will he say, My family, my family. No, never. He will say, My ummah, my ummah. My ummah, my ummah. In the most difficult of times. Oh people, when your father and your mother will run away from you. Your father and your mother, the, the ones who, who, who you love the most, and who love you the most, as you think, will run away from you. They will run away from you. Why will they run away from you? They will run away from you because when you come to them, you may ask them for even one reward. And they, ask, they will be stingy on that day. They will not even wish to give you one reward because they will see the great punishment in front of them and the great reward in front of them. Jannah and Naar will be, will be ready in front of them. So how will they even give you one small reward? How will they even give you one small reward? Except for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the only one, only one who will make dua for us. He is the only one in paradise. Only one on the day of judgment who will make tawassul to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. So why should we not love him? Why should we not love him? <coughs> the most, the, 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 the people who were most worthy of, of being, of loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa were indeed the companions of Allah, or companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We have in the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa a beautiful example to teach us how to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so you see in the example of Abdullah ibn, ibn Abdullah ibn Salul. Now Abdullah ibn Salul, who was Abdullah ibn Salul? He was the, the leader of the hypocrites of Medina. But his son, whose name was also Abdullah, 
whose son, the, the son, his name was also Abdullah, the leader, the son of the leader of the hypocrites. But he was a believer, the son was a believer. So what happened was once in the battle of Banu Mustaliq, the people were coming back from that war. And Abdullah ibn Salul, the hypocrite, had gone with Rasulullah sallam to show that he was also a good, good, good believer. To show off that he was also a good believer. So when they were coming back from Banu Mustaliq, then Abdullah ibn Salul told the people, he said, when we approach Medina, indeed the more honorable of us, meaning himself, will throw out the more humble of us, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at that point, some of the companions heard this, and they knew that, that Abdullah ibn Salul was trying to mock Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they went to Rasulullah and told him, look, this is what Abdullah ibn Salul is saying. Oh Rasulullah, see what Abdullah ibn Salul is saying. And so Abdul, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became saddened at that. At that point, Abdullah the son, the son heard what his father had said. Son heard what his father had said. And so he took his sword out. And he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh Rasulullah, order me and I will cut my father's head off for you. Order me and I will cut my father's head for you. O oh Rasulullah, may my father and mother be sacrificed for you. Look at the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became happy and said, no, leave your father, leave your father, leave him. And so the small group of Muslims approached Medina. They approached Medina. As you know, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was when they approached Medina, then they would hurry. They would hurry up to reach, to reach Medina. So they, they started to hurry up. And Abdullah ibn Salul started to run. And then Abdullah the son came and he put his sword to his father's neck and said, Wallahi, you will not enter until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enters. Wallahi, you will not enter until the more honorable of us, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, throws up the more humble of us, meaning, oh you my father. And at that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he entered Medina, and he heard that this is what, this is what Abdullah the son had, had done to his father, he became happy and he said, no, let him enter. And he made dua for Abdullah. Look at the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is this love that makes a man miss Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What is this love that makes a man wish to sacrifice his father and mother? Wish to sacrifice his father and mother, the most loving oppositions to him. What is this love? It is but love for the best of mankind. Also in the battle of Badr, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. Abu Ubaidah, the trustee of this ummah, the ameen of this ummah. He killed his own father in the battle of Badr. And we know Umar, may Allah have mercy upon him, may Allah be pleased with them all. Umar killed his own uncle, Al-As, in the battle of Badr. And Mus'ab ibn Umair, Mus'ab ibn Umair, he killed his own brother in the battle of Badr. What is this love that makes a person kill his own, own relatives? What is this love that makes a person kill his own relatives? Now I ask you, I ask your people, that if... The son was now on, on one side and the father was on one side. If one of them were on the, on the side of Rasulullah would you have the courage to go and fight? Would you have the courage to go and fight your own father? Would you do that? Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr, the son of Abu Bakr, Muhammad, his name was Muhammad. He came to, Rasul, he came to Abu Bakr and said on the battle of Badr, Oh, oh my father, I was trying to avoid you because Muhammad was actually a, non, a disbeliever still. And Muhammad came to fight. Muhammad the son of Abu Bakr came to fight Abu Bakr, his own father in the battle of Badr. So he said, I was trying to avoid you, O Abu Bakr. I was trying to avoid you, O my father, so that I don't have to face you and kill you. He said, as for me, wallahi. He said, as for me, wallahi, had I found you, I would have killed you straight away. He said, I, wallahi, I would have killed you straight away. This is the true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And once Abu Sufyan, Abu Sufyan's daughter was Umm Habiba. Umm Habiba was one of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once Abu Sufyan, whilst he was still a disbeliever, he came to visit Umm Habiba in Medina. So he came all the way to Medina, and he came to the hut of Umm Habiba, and he knocked on the door, and Umm Habiba let, her, let him in. So he came in, and he wished to sit down, and there was a mat on the ground. And so he wished to sit down on the mat, and when Umm Habiba saw this, she quickly went and folded the mat up and took it away. She quickly went and folded the mat up and took it away. So Abu Sufyan, Abu Sufyan said, Wallahi, it is as if the mat is better than me or I am too good for the mat. It is either the mat is too good for me or I am too good for the mat. So Umm Habiba replied, No, rather this is the mat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you are a filthy polytheist. And you are a filthy mushrik. 
And I will never let a filthy mushrik sit on the mat of Rasulullah If this is the love for the mat of Rasulullah What is your love for Rasulullah How do you show your true love for Rasulullah There are these people who swear against Rasulullah. There are these people who talk against Rasulullah. Have you ever felt your eyes with having tears whenever this has happened? Have you ever felt this anger, this burning passion inside you when you have heard about this for, uh, against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Where is your true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Abu Sufyan, may Allah have, may Allah have mercy upon him. When he was still a disbeliever, he was uh, tr- he was punishing a lot of the believers in Medina, uh, in in Mecca. He was punishing a lot of the believers. He was punishing Zaid. And once, once when he was punishing Zaid, and he was stoning him, and he was lashing him, then he put him into the cage, and he told him, Oh so and so, oh Zaid, do you not wish that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam be in your in your in your place? Do you not wish that you be back at home with your family and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam be in your place? And he said, Wallahi, I would not wish that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam be even pricked pricked by a thorn. I would not wish that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam be even pricked by a thorn. When once when Abu Bakr may Allah have mercy upon him, when he was being lashed, once when Rasulullah sallallahu when he was when he was prostrating in the Kaaba, when he was praying to the Kaaba, and he was prostrating, then the then the then the, then the kuffar of Quraysh saw him, and they and they bought the ent- en- entrails of of a of a of a camel that they had slaughtered, and they put it on the back of 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 Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so when Abu Bakr saw this, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He came to Rasulullah and took this off, and took the entrails of this camel off off the back of Rasulullah and so and he went went to to these mushrikeen to this Quraysh and he started telling them off for what they for, for what they did. So the mushrikeen they started to beat Abu Bakr and they beat him and beat him and beat him so much until Abu Bakr fell 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 fainted, and he fell fainted. So the people of Abu Bakr his tribe came and took him back. And when after a couple of hours Abu Bakr regained his consciousness, when he regained his consciousness, Abu Bakr, what was the first thing he said? What was the first thing he said? He said, Wallahi, how is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The very first thing that he said was, how is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This is the true love of a companion for his true beloved, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also in the battle of Uhud, there was a woman from Banu Adinar, and we do not know what this woman's name was. This woman from Banu Dinar. She came to the battle of Badr to see what had happened, and 70 of the Muslims had died, and 37 of the non-Muslims had died. So 70 of the Muslims had died in, in the battle of Badr. So she came and passed by a corpse in front of her, and said, what is this corpse? And because it had been mutilated, because the mushrikeen had come and cut off their noses and their ears, and cut open their, their, their chests and taken out their hearts and their livers. And so she asked, who is this corpse? And so one of the companions replied, this is your father. This is your father, oh so and so. Then she went and, and passed by another corpse and said, Who is this? He said, Oh, this is your brother. This is your brother. And so she passed by another corpse and said, Who is this? This is your son. Three of her family members, her father, her brother, and her son had died. Then she asked, But where is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, Where is Rasulullah? Then the companion said, Look, he is there. He is there. So she went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Oh Rasulullah, Truly, O Rasulullah, as long as you are alright, then all my worries are nothing. So truly, O Rasulullah, as long as you are okay, you are my beloved. Truly, as long as you are okay, then everything else is nothing. Everything else is nothing. As long as you are okay, O Rasulullah, everything else is nothing. In the battle of Badr, in the battle of Badr, Sa'ad ibn Quzay, he was from one of the fighters, one of, one of, one of the people of one of the people of, of the Ansar, one of the Ansar. He was, he was lining up to fight the people of, of, of Badr and, uh, and uh, the, the fight the mushrikeen on the day of Badr. And when, the people, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was going past with his, with his stick and he was correcting people and putting them into line. Sa'ad ibn Quzay, this person, he started coming out of line. He started coming out of line. He started coming out of line. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him and he went with his stick and hit him on his stomach. He, he hit him on his stomach and hurt him. So Sa'ad ibn Quzay said, Ya Rasulullah, what is this? What is this, O Rasulullah? You have hurt me. And I want recompense, O Rasulullah. I want recompense. I wish to hit you back, O Rasulullah. You have hurt me, so I wish to hurt you back. So Rasulullah sallallahu he lifted his stove and said, hit me back. He said, hit me back. And so Sa'ad ibn Quzay, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu and he hugged Rasulullah sallallahu and he kissed him. He kissed him on his stomach. So all the companions saw this. And said, what is this, O Sa'ad? 
Rasulullah SAW said, Oh, Ya Sa'ad, ma hamalak ala hadha. What has caused you to do this, O oh, Sa'ad? So Sa'ad ibn Khuzay said, Oh Rasulullah, you see the mushrikeen in front of us. And soon, after a little while, we will be fighting. And I know that I may die in this battle. So oh, Rasulullah, I wish that the last thing that my body touches is your skin, O oh, Rasulullah. Imagine the love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine the love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you not remember how this tree was crying for Rasulullah? When when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi was giving the, the the khutbah, and thereafter when the number of Muslims became so much, when the number of, number of Muslims became so much that there was felt a need to build a uh, to build a member for Rasulullah, so a member was built, and when Rasul, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started to give his khutbah from the member, they could hear the hanin al jazar, they could hear the, the the windings of the tree, they could hear a sound coming from the tree, an authentic hadith in Bukhari, they could hear this the, the sound coming from the tree. So Rasulullah turned towards the tree, it was as if the tree was crying. It was as if the tree was crying. So Rasulullah went to the tree and put his hands on the tree, and then the tree stopped crying. The tree stopped crying. An authentic hadith in Bukhari. So some of the Salaf said, if this tree was able to cry, if a tree, a thing that does not have life, if a tree who is not obliged to love Rasulullah wasallam was able to cry for missing Rasulullah wasallam are not a people who say that their prophet is Rasulullah wasallam more worthy of crying for missing him? Are not you or people more worthy of crying for missing Rasulullah wasallam Are you not more, more worthy of missing him? When Rasulullah wasallam had died, the first and the most, the, the, the dua that the people of Medina used to make all the time to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was that, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, give us the meeting of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at the pond. Because the first time that, we, that inshallah all of us will meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we, die on, if we die as Muslims, is on the pond of Al-Kawthar. We will inshallah meet him on the pond of Al-Kawthar. This is the first time we will meet him. So the companions after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had died, used to make dua to Allah. Oh Allah, give us the meeting of our Habib. Oh Allah, give us the meeting of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at the pond of Al-Kawthar. Anas, may Allah have mercy upon him. He used to say, I see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in my dreams every night. He said, I see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in my dreams every night, except in the odd nights in which I do not see him. So he raised his hands up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He raised his hands up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Oh, oh Allah, please let me see my beloved even on the odd nights. He said, Oh Allah, let me see my beloved even on the odd nights. How many of us have ever seen Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in his dream? Yet Anas used to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa every day, except in the, in the odd days. Every even night he used to see Rasulullah. And so he used to make dua to Allah, Oh Allah, I cannot bear this. I cannot bear missing my Prophet even for one day. So let me even see him even on the odd days. <coughs> Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah have mercy upon him. He used to say, Wallahi, there was nothing more beloved to us than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, there was nothing more beloved to us than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And my eyesight had not seen anything more beloved to me than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's an authentic hadith in Bukhari, in, in Muslim. He said, nothing had, my eyes had seen nothing more beloved than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And wallahi, we could not make ourselves look at Rasulullah. He said, we the companions, because of a great praise and a love and exaltation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we could not make ourselves look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No wonder, because they loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much, they could not bear, bear to even put their eyesight at Rasulullah. So whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in front of them, they would always be looking down. Always be looking down. Naam ya Rasulullah. Naam ya Rasulullah. Naam may my father and my, my, and my mother be sacrificed for you, O Rasulullah. What do you command me? What do you order me? O Rasulullah, love you for Allah's sake. This is how the companions were. This is how the companions were. An example of the true great love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Once Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar, came to came to Umar and said, Oh, 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 my, oh my father, oh Umar, oh my father. Why do you love Osama so much? Why do you love Osama? This particular companion called Osama. Why do you love him so much? You love him more than me. Why do you love him more than me? By Allah, I, he has never beaten me to any battle. By Allah, he has never beaten me to any, any battle. I have always been better than him in every battle. 
So why do you love him more than me, O oh, oh my father? So Umar, may Allah have mercy upon him. He said, Indeed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love Usama more than you. He said, Indeed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love Usama more than you. So I prefer the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rather than my love. I prefer the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rather than my love. How many of us prefers the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over, over, and above, over and above our own love? We know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to love Hassan wa Hussein. We know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to love Aisha and Abu Bakr. We know he used to love Khadija, he used to love, he used to love the Ansar, he used to love the Muhajireen. He used to love them more than our own people. He used to love them more than our own families. So how do we love our own families more than them? How do we love our own families more than them? Rather we should prefer the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rather than our own love. Also Umar, Umar came to Abbas, who was, the, who was the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and said, Oh Abbas, accept Islam. This was when Abbas was still a, a disbeliever. The uncle of Rasulullah al-Abbas was still a disbeliever. He said, Oh Abbas, accept Islam. Oh Abbas, accept Islam. Wallahi, it is more beloved to me that, that you should accept Islam rather than my own uncle al-Khattab accepting Islam. Wallahi, it is more beloved that you should accept Islam rather than my own uncle al-Khattab accepting Islam. And Abbas said, why? Why is it more beloved? That I should accept Islam rather than your own uncle, whereas your uncle is closer to, 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 to you than me. He said, because Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have loved that you accept Islam before my uncle. So I prefer his love rather than my own love. Subhanallah, this is how, this is how Umar truly understood that when he had come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Oh Rasulullah, I love you more than anything else except my own self. Except my own self. So, so, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him, No, Umar, you have not truly believed. Then Umar said, Now, O Rasulullah, I love you more than everything else, including myself. So at that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Now, Umar, now you have truly believed. Now you have truly believed. Do you see how Umar truly understood what that meant? How it truly means to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That you put the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam above and, above and before your own love. That you put his own love before your own love. That you put him before your own emotions. <coughs> Once Bilal who was from the, the fighters, uh, Bilal who was from the fighters in the battle of Al-Quds, in the battle for, 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 for Bayt al-Maqdis. Uh, as you know, the battle of, uh, battle of Al-Quds uh, for, for, for Bayt al-Maqdis wasn't really fought. Why? Because the people of Bayt al-Maqdis, they came, they came to, to, uh, to Khalid bin Walid and said, Oh Khalid bin Walid, here is some poison. He said, Oh Khalid bin Walid, here is some poison. If you drink this and you still survive, we will give you Bayt al-Maqdis. We will give you the keys to Bayt al-Maqdis without you even having to raise a sword against us. And Khalid bin Walid saw this and saw that he could save all of the Muslims. So he said, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Then he drank it and nothing happened to him. So al Dhahabi, may Allah have mercy upon him. The great scholar says in Sirah Alam al Nubula, he says, Hada wallahi, Hada wallahi mu'jiza, Hada wallahi, this is a miracle. Look how, how Khalid bin Walid, he drank the poison and did not die. Later on, when, when Al-Quds was taken over, then the people who had actually made the, made the poison, that the priests who had actually made the poison, they said, Wallahi, we, we had made the poison from the most poisonous of things that we could ever find. The most poisonous of poisons that we could ever find. Subhanallah. So, what, so we come to, the, to, our, to our story. And that is Bilal. May Allah have mercy upon him. He was from the fighters who opened uh, Al-Quds. So Umar, may Allah have mercy upon him, came from, from, from Medina. And he came to Al-Quds in order to take the keys of Al-Quds from the people, from the, from, the mushri, from, the, from, the, from the Christians, from the Romans at that time. So the time for prayer came. The time for prayer came. And so the companions, because the companions had all gathered together to fight that war, looked at Bilal. They said, oh Bilal, would that you give the adhan once more. Because Bilal, may Allah be pleased with him, had made an oath that after the death of Rasulullah wasallam, he would never give the adhan even once. He would never give the adhan even once. So the companion said, oh, oh Bilal, please, would that you just give the adhan just for once. Just for once and remind us of your adhan, oh Bilal, because we really miss it. So Bilal kept insisting, saying, no, no, I had made a promise, it's only for Rasulullah, only for Rasulullah. So the companions kept on insisting, kept on insisting until Bilal agreed. Then so Bilal went up to the minaret. He went up to the highest place 
that he could find. And he put his, his fingers in his ears and he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the companions remembered the adhan of Bilal. The, compa- the companions who had gathered there remembered the adhan of Bilal. And they remembered how Bilal used to give the adhan to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and remind the Muslims of their prayer. So they started crying. Why were they crying? They were crying, they were not crying because, because, because there was anything different in the adhan, no. The adhan was the same adhan, and the companions were all there, yet oh, the only thing that was missing was their beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they were crying because they missed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They missed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the people were so amazed, the people that they all, they, when they saw all the companions, the great army of the Muslims had come to conquer Quds, and they were all crying when they heard the adhan of Bilal. Subhanallah, look at the love for Rasulullah sallallahu in the hearts of the believers. There are certain signs that truly show that someone really loves Rasulullah sallallahu There are certain signs to show what the love of Rasulullah sallallahu truly means to us. If all of these stories that I have told you, and these are not stories, wallahi they are not stories, but they are all authentic tales from our pious predecessors. If these stories have not touched you, then I do not know what will touch your heart. If these stories have not touched you, if the love of Rasulullah wasallam has not entered into you, and you are in Medina, you are in his city, and you are in the city of, the, of his companions, if his love has not entered into you, Wallahi, I feel sorry for you. And I hope that everyone has been affected by these stories, has been affected, and that the love of Rasulullah wasallam has truly entered into their hearts. So now the question must be asked, what are the true signs that show that someone really loves Rasulullah sallallahu The first and most important sign that shows the true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is that you should follow his example, is that you should put his sunnah before everything else, is that you should love his sunnah more than anything else. As do you not see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, in the beautiful Qur'an, say indeed, say O Muhammad, tell the believers, if you indeed truly love Allah, then follow me, then Allah will love you. Yes, if you love Allah and therefore love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because the love of Rasulullah and the love of Allah are, inter- are, are, are intertwined, they are together. They are connected. You cannot love Allah except that you love Rasulullah. And you cannot love Rasulullah except that you love Allah. So if you indeed love Allah, then follow me, follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then indeed Allah will love you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. And not only Allah will love you, because Allah Azawajal, when He loves, He will tell Jibreel alayhi salam, He will say, oh, oh Jibreel, indeed I love so and so. So love him as well. So Jibreel goes down to the people of the heavens and says, oh so and so people of the heaven. O oh, oh people of the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so and so, so love him. And, and Jibreel alayhi salam tells all the angels, say, O oh, angels, Allah azawajal loves so and so, so love him. And he tells the people of the earth, saying, love, love so and so. And indeed, for Allah loves him, so the people of the earth also love him. From the signs of true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is to remember him a lot. Is to remember him a lot and to send your, your salutations and your peace and your blessings and your greetings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Indeed Allah, O oh believers, indeed Allah and the, and the angels send their peace and their blessings and their salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you too, O oh believers, send your peace and your blessings and your salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim fi al-alamina innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim fi al-alamina innaka hamidun majid. From the love, <coughs> from the signs of the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to have this great impatience, this great impatience and this great eagerness in your heart to meet him. Is to have this great impatience and your great eagerness in your heart to meet him. Subhanallah, Bilal, may Allah have mercy upon him. He used to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much that on his deathbed, when Bilal, may Allah have mercy upon him, he was dying. As Ibn Kathir, may Allah, may Allah have mercy upon him, reports in Bidaw al-Nihaya, that, that Bilal, when he was dying, 
his companions, the companions of Bilal came to him and were, and were and started crying, saying, Oh Bilal, we, we're, we're going to miss you. Oh Bilal, what is going to happen to you? Oh Bilal, you're going, to, we're, you're going away from us. So Bilal smiled at them, saying, No, do not be unhappy, for Wallahi, I'm going to meet my Habib. Wallahi, I'm, in, I'm only going so that I can meet my Habib that I've been missing for so long. I'm only going so I can, I can meet Rasulullah wasallam. so don't be unhappy for me. from the signs of love for Rasulullah <laughs> from the true signs of love for Rasulullah wasallam is that you should love the one that Rasulullah wasallam loved and they should hate the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa hated. So you should love the Ansar. You should love the Muslims. You should love every good thing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa pointed us and directed us to. And you should hate every, every evil thing. And you should hate the disbelievers. And you should hate the people of shirk and kufr and, and, and sin. This is from the signs of loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa How do you wish to love Rasulullah and you do not love that which he loved? How do you wish to say that you hate that, you hate that which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa hated and you, and you do not really hate that? How do you love this life so much? Yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa never once did he ever love this life. Never once did he ever love this life. <clears throat> from the signs of loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is that you should shun this life. Is that, is that you should shun this life. Subhanallah, how this life has come to us in all its glory. How this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had opened up this life to us. Do you not remember how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying, O Prophet of Allah, <coughs> O Muhammad, if you wish, I will turn this old mountain of Uhud, and you have visited mountain of Uhud, how grand and how big the mountain is, how large and wide and how expanse the whole mountain is. He said, if you wish, I will turn this mountain into gold for you, O Muhammad. I will turn this mountain into gold, O Muhammad. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, O, o Allah, no. Rather, O Allah, let me live with the poor and let me be raised with the poor. So if you indeed love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how do you love that which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not love? How do you love this material life, this good car and this good wealth, and this life that you are leading, and this, this great hotel that you are staying in, and the great food that you are eating? How do you love this? How do you love this over and above the love of, 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 of what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had loved? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once there is a beautiful, new, beautiful narration, and the companions came out of their house. Once Abu Bakr came out of his house and he was extremely hungry. Abu Bakr, the greatest of the people after, Ras- after, the, after the prophets, came out of his house. And he had tied a stone to his stomach. And Umar also came out of his house after Dhuhr and he had tied another stone to the stomach. Why tie a stone to the stomach? Because they, the weight of the stone would fool the stretch receptors of the stomach in, and, and make it think that it is full. Make it think that it is full so he would not be hungry. He would not be troubled with the, with the worry of hunger. And then when they came out of their houses, they saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of mankind, the beloved of Allah, came out of his house and he had three stones to his stomach. He had three stones to his stomach. Imagine this. He was more hungry than all of them put together. When you have this food in front of you, and he remembered that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never had this beautiful food. He said, Wallahi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never saw white bread. Wallah, he never felt the taste of white bread. And we, all we eat is white bread. We eat the best of foods. Do you not see this food in front of you? And you see that Rasulullah the best of mankind, did not even have even, even a morsel of this. Do you not feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to, going, going to forbid you from, from paradise? Do you not feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden you from really tasting the sweetness of Iman? From really tasting the sweetness of Iman? Because you are so much into this life. You are so materialistic, O oh people. Subhanallah, may Allah forgive us. May Allah give us a dislike for this life in our heart. May Allah truly let us live in this life as if we are truly in, like, like in a prison. For because if this, if this life becomes like a bed of roses to us, then there's something wrong. There's something wrong. Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not wish to give us the, give us the, the, the great good that He is waiting for us, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to misguide us. Subhanallah. May Allah, may Allah keep this life away from us. May Allah keep the love of this life away from us. <coughs> lastly, lastly, 
There is a beautiful hadith that I wish to mention to you. An authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam authentic hadith. He said as Abu Huraira may Allah have mercy upon him said. He said from the ones who love me the most. He said from the ones who love me the most will be a people who will come after me. He said from the people who love me the most will be a people who will come after me. He w- they're talking about us. We are a people who come after Rasulullah. We are a people who have come after Rasulullah. So he said that from the people who love me the most will be a people who will come after me. A people who will come after me. And they would wish that they could sacrifice their, their, their families and their wealth in order to just see me even once. He said, from the people who will come after me are the people who will love me the most. And what is the characteristic of these people? The characteristic of these people is that they would wish that they could sacrifice all their wealth and all their family in order to just see me even once. I ask you this question, and I leave you with this question unanswered. Are you of those people who wish to sacrifice all that you have, and all that you possess, and all your family and your children and your father and your mother, in order to just see your beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even once. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, he said, there will come a people after me who will be my khalil, be my best friends. My, my best friends, there will come a people after me who will be my best friends in paradise. Best friends in paradise. So the companion said, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Rasulullah, we are your Khalil. We are your best friends, O oh Rasulullah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, you are my companions. Rather, my Khalil, my best friends, will be a people who come after me. And they will love me and believe in me even though they have not seen me. Wallahi, this is a hadith talking about us. Wallahi, O oh Allah, we make you witness that we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we believe in him even though we have not seen him. So we wish that we will be from the Khalil of Rasulullah, the truly beloved friends of Rasulullah in paradise. Subhanallah, Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Okay, now inshallah we'll take some questions. If brothers have any questions, they can ask some. And also the sisters, if they put some questions on the side, uh, a brother will come up and bring them down inshallah. We only have about 15-20 minutes. Nadeem. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. The brother asked the question that uh, Allah, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us the best of guidance in everything. And from the things that he showed us was uh, uh, how to do our salah upon him. So he showed us the best way of, of saying salah upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in prayer, which is say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala. As you know, you know, in the root that, 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 you, that you say in salah. Uh, and there are very, various narrations on how to say this. Uh, so the brother's question was, what is the best way of saying uh, in outside of the salah? Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had not really defined what is the best way of saying uh, the salah upon him outside of the salah. Rather, he left it upon its, uh, upon its uh, clear meaning. Uh, so that which is best in salah is also best outside of salah. Because as you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had said that the prayer is dua. That the prayer is indeed just is supplication itself. So when you're making this, this is a supplication as well. So if it is the best thing that if we have a guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in in salah, then that is also the guidance, best guidance outside salah. Um, however, if in any way that you that you say your your salah upon Rasulullah, even to say Allahumma sal, you know sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is to send is to send your peace and blessings and your greetings and your salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And as you know, Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa taala has has special angels. That go around and he, and listen to the people who are who are sending the salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then they go back to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and, and inform him that so and so has has sent you salutations on you. And uh, from the benefits of this salutation is that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will remember this on the day of judgment, and he will make dua for you and tawassul for you on the day of judgment based on it. Yes, brother, go, continue. Yes. Are you saying that the salam 
was included if you do Allah on Sunday but does not have the salam and it per se? Right. Uh, the brother's question was uh, the, 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 the ayah of the Quran which is Ya ayyuhaladhir amun sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Sallu alayhi Means pray upon him Wasallimu And send your, your greetings to him So the two words Have, a, have really a, diff- a same meaning Similar meaning Okay Because of the fact that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Only mentioned these two together In order to really emphasize uh, The fact that you should really be, really be sending your salutations upon him So the ulema mentioned That the greetings And the salutations Because you cannot greet Rasulullah s.a.w. Except that you're praying for him And you cannot pray for him Except that you're greeting him So these two words Are actually uh, as you can say, synonyms uh, both have the similar meaning in this context. In this context, um, what are the characteristics of the people who will uh, meet the Prophet on the first day of the Pop? What are the characteristics like? Right. Uh, the, the brother asked the question: What are the characteristics of the people who will meet will, who will meet Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the pond? The characteristics of the people who will meet Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the pond are the people of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. No one else will ever get to drink from the pond except. For Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, by that I mean, I mean are people who hold on to the Quran and Sunnah, who prefer the Quran and Sunnah above anything else. So they put the, the view of the Quran and Sunnah and the opinion of the Quran and Sunnah above, above every, everything else. So they are the only people who will get to drink from the pond of Rasulullah. So, so it must be understood that the pond of Rasulullah is actually before, according to the correct opinion amongst the ulema, is actually before the Sirat. Is actually before the the sirat. Okay, and the sirat, as you know, is is a, is the bridge that, that everyone has to walk. So the pond of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is actually before before the sirat. As Ibn Kathir, may Allah mercy, mercy upon him, mentions in Bidan Nihai, it's actually before before the sirat. And the, and, and this pond of of Al Kawthar has actually has two ca, two can two, two canals, two uh, pipes that come from the river come from the rivers of paradise and feed the feed uh, feed the water to it. And the characteristics of this pond is that the water is, is whiter than, than snow, is more clear than snow, whiter than snow. It is, it is sweeter than, than, than honey. It is colder than ice. Uh, and, the, 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 and these are all authentic hadith reported in, uh, in all the, the, the Qutb al-Sunan. And that, the, uh, that the, uh, the, the length and breadth, it is square in size. It is square in size and that the length and breadth of it, the length of it is, between the distance, is, is like the distance between Medina and Sana'a in Yemen. Sana'a is, is a city in Yemen. And this is the distance, this is the length and breadth of, of this pond of Al-Kawthar. And of course, as you know, the well-known hadith, and that the, there will be uh, the number of uh, uh, cups that will be on this, on this uh, Al-Kawthar is like the number of stars. Like the number of stars. And everyone who will drink from it will get to meet Rasulullah Wasallam, And everyone who drinks from it will never be thirsty in their life, in, ever again. So the ulema mentioned that whoever drink from it, why will they drink in paradise? They will only drink for pleasure. Nothing else, not for thirst. They'll never be thirsty again after this. They'll never be thirsty again, right? Now, the, the, the significance of this pond is, is because of the fact that, uh, that, uh, that as many of the uh, narrations from the Salaf mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the sun closer to us on the day of judgment until it is only about 10, 10 centimeters above our heads only. So, so, so people, everyone will sweat so much. You, you, people will sweat so much. It is, it is a great a, a day of, of test and torment. Everyone will sweat so much on that day. Some people will sweat up to their knees. Some people will sweat up to their elbows and, uh, and up until their shoulders. Some people, some people will be drowned in the sweat. So this is why, this is the significance of the pond of, of Rasulullah that they will actually get to uh, uh, quench their thirst and they will never be thirsty again after that. Right, so may Allah give us from, 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 the, from the drink of Al-Kawthar, may Allah, inshallah. Namakhi. My, sorry? Uh, the brother is mentioning whether uh, whether there is an authentic hadith or not about uh, whether the, the member of Rasulullah is above the Haud or the, the Kawthar of Rasulullah. I don't know of any authentic hadith on that. Allah Ta'ala Alam. Allah knows best. Any questions from down? No. If the sisters have any questions, please write them down. The brother's coming up now to collect them. Uh, on, on a fact, uh, can we just do dua for the Prophet 
Okay, uh, making dua for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the etiquettes of uh, of making dua for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The etiquettes of making dua for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had taught us that you should make dua for him, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send your salutations and, and your peace and blessings on on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is not as people sometimes imagine that oh, oh Allah give the reward of my hajj to Rasulullah. As some people say. Or for example, some people say, Oh Allah, give the reward of my prayer to Rasulullah. Or the reward of my sacrifice to Rasulullah. Or the reward of my stoning to Rasulullah. All of these are innovative practices. Rasulullah never did that. The companions, they love Rasulullah more than, more than us. They never did that. So when you are in, in, Al, in Al-Arafat, yes, you send your peace and your blessings and your salutations upon him. Uh, and, and you make dua for him, say, Oh Allah, give him the highest station of paradise. Just like you do, which is, you know, in, when, after the adhan is done. After the adhan, you make your you make your 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 uh, salutations upon Rasulullah. Allahumma rabbi hadi da'ati tama wa salat al qaima. Oh Allah, the the Lord of this the great prayer and the and uh, of the, of this great call and and of this uh, uh, great great prayer. Ati Muhammadan al wasila wal fadila. Give Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam al wasila the means and the, the greatest of stations. Wal uh, fadila and the and the best and most immense of glory in in paradise. Uh, and the highest, highest of grades in paradise. Uh, and give him the station, station of Maqam Mahmud, meaning the praiseworthy station, which is, which is a station that is, uh, in, on the day of judgment, which is a higher, high, high level station above the plane of, of, uh, of, uh, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Uh, give him this station which you have promised him. Inna uh, al miad. This is an uh, extra wording in some hadith in Bihaqi. If, it's, if you find it's authentic, it's, it is authentic. So you can say this extra wording. Inna kala tukhlif al miad. Verily, you do not uh, break your promise. Naam. Naam. This is a, a, a good a good thing that you mentioned. Uh, once Ubay ibn Kaab came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Oh, Ras- oh, oh Rasulullah, uh, this is an authentic hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim. Ubay ibn Kaab, uh, one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came to Rasulullah and said, Oh Rasulullah, uh, how much of my salah shall I, give, shall I give you? Shall I give you half? Right? <coughs> so the Prophet said, If you wish, then give me half. They said, Shall I give you three fourths? He said, if you wish, give me three fourths. And shall I give you all of my salah? He said, were you, were, you to do, were you to do that, then it would be enough for you. Were you to do that, then that would be enough for you. So this hadith, the ulama sometimes had, had, had difficulty in understanding this hadith. What does it mean to actually give your salah to Rasulullah? Meaning, do you say that, oh Allah, make my salah, this prayer that I'm praying for Rasulullah? No. What this hadith really means, as many of the ulama mentioned, is that Ubay ibn Kaab used to make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. He used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. So when he said, shall I give you half of my dua, meaning shall I make half of the dua that I make for you? And when shall I make three-fourths of my dua for you, or Rasulullah, or shall I make all of my dua for you? So when he said that, so Rasulullah s.a.w. said, were you to do that, all of that for me, then that would be enough for you. Now, the ulema mentioned that why would it be enough for you? Because, as you know, the hadith that when a, ma- when a Muslim makes dua for his brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel and says, وَلَكَ, وَلَكَ مِثْلُ وَلَكَ مِثْلُ وَلَكَ مِثْلُ When you say, Oh Allah, give my brother uh, Naim this and this. Oh Allah, give my brother uh, you know, Abdullah this and this. Right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends, sends an angel and says and repeats after you. Say, Oh Allah, give him وَلَكَ مِثْلُ And for you is the same. For you is the same. Oh Allah, give him the same. Give him the same. So this is why when you're making all your dua for Rasulullah then that that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. That is, that is uh, enough for you. That if you were to actually spend your time making dua for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah give him the highest station in paradise, or Allah give him the most uh, worthy position, and uh, and this is all that you were to make and not make dua for you, uh, then indeed this would be enough for you. But truly, no one can make complete dua for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except who loves, who really loves him in his heart. You will not be able to do it, Akhi, until your your heart really loves Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because when Arafat is coming to an end, you will say, Oh, let me just make a dua for me myself. Oh, Allah give me a good job. Oh, Allah give me this. Give me give me that. Right, so you will not truly be able to make complete love for complete dua for Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم until you truly love him in your heart, and that is when your tongue will show it and when your actions will show it as well. Yeah, yeah inshallah. Sorry. Any last question, brothers? Yes, brother. Uh, more like clarification. 
when the people who often have more money uh, some normally is a portion or maybe have numerous money that and one of a portion is basic on behalf of the profit or, or something to that effect. Is is that something that is uh, I'm not sure it's like, an or like uh, you know, when Rasul Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he offered 100 camels in his last Hajj, <coughs> he he offered 100 camels. By the way, I wanted to actually mention something, and that is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just before I answer your question, brother, uh, is that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said al Hajj al Hajj wa Thaj, that Hajj is to offer food to people and to slaughter, and we know Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he offered 100 camels. Now, how much is obligatory on us to offer in slaughtering? How much? One sheep, or how much of a camel? One seventh of a camel, yeah. But the Prophet Sallallahu he knew what was obligatory on him was what one seventh of a camel. But he offered what? He offered one hundred camels, one hundred camels in sacrifice. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Al Hajj al wa Thaj." He said, "Al Hajj is offering food to people, giving food to people, and also slaughtering." So my advice to you is to offer a lot in sacrifice, as much as you can. This is from the benefits. This is from the the special things about Hajj. That you offer a lot in sacrifice. The Prophet ﷺ did so much, so why should you also not do so as well? Right. So the Prophet ﷺ, as the ulama mentioned, he offered equivalent to 700 people, because 700 camels times seven is 700. He offered equivalent to 700 people, whereas we offer only one. No, rather, if you have the means and ability, then offer a lot in sacrifice. This is the uh, this is the good etiquette of, of of having a good Hajj that you should offer a lot in sacrifice, right? Regarding the brother's question is that uh, when people offer sacrifices, they also sometimes they say, or oh, oh Allah make this sacrifice for Rasulullah Now Now this is a exception, because Rasulullah as you know, that he had, when he had sacrificed his animal, after he had sacrificed, he, his first sacrifice, he said, Ya, ya Allah, هذا عن, عن, عن Muhammad wa wa ahlihi. This is for, for, for Muhammad, meaning himself, Rasulullah and his family. Then he slaughtered the second one, and he said, Ya, ya, ya Allah, هذا عن ummati. An ummati ummati Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam alladhina lam yadbah. Yani, oh Allah, this is for the 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 ummah of Rasulullah of of my ummah who who have not had the means to sacrifice. So it shows therefore that the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did offer sacrifice on behalf of his ummah. So it is permissible for you to offer sacrifice on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, it is permissible for you to do that. Now, but of course it's obligatory first first of all to offer on your behalf. So uh, offer it first on your behalf on your family. This is what is obligatory first. And everything else is uh, is supergatory. With that, inshallah, we finish. Subhanallah, wa bihamdika, shadallah, illa anta